Welcome to week number three of my limbo coaching with Lytton. Lytton, wow, it's lovely and sunny, isn't it? It's finally wonderful. Last time we talked, I was absolutely drenched head to foot, funnily enough, in Cornwall. Nice to see you. <laughs> now, how does the sunshine and the heat affect our blood glucose? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? It, it depends, actually. Um, so heat can dehydrate you big time, right? So uh, when you are dehydrated, your blood glucose can be elevated. So uh, you may have noticed as a limbo member, you probably get nudged into drinking more water. Um, I'm not sure whether it happens specifically when it's hot. It's more like that when you're hot, because um, we measure your, your body temperature with a, the limbo band. Yeah. Uh, how's your week been in terms of eating? So it's been good. I've been really finding it difficult, though, to eat later purely because I've had a little bit of an insomnia week this week where I've been going to bed at normal time at nine, 10 o'clock, but I've been waking up at like three, four in the morning. So trying to take my breakfast later after 10 o'clock has been really challenging. So I know this is what your advice was last week. So what I've tried to do instead is bring my evening meal earlier and bring it that way. And and what you still do is you still limit the amount of time you're eating for. So uh, that does seem to work. With your insomnia, is it getting better? Uh, yes. So I messaged you about it and I've upped my water, first of all, and then getting electrolytes in. So just making sure I'm getting all my vitamins and minerals through nutrition. So that that is one of the things that we find sometimes people have when they... Um, get themselves off the blood glucose roller coaster very early on we do sometimes find that people have uh various symptoms um as they're in ketosis a bit more uh which means your your body is basically freeing up fatty acids to fuel glucose production i'm not going to get into too technical details about that because i already sound like one of the science people um but what what happens is there are various symptoms that various people have and i think uh some people get what what's known as keto flu, which is they feel a bit fluy sometimes. Yeah. Uh, some people get get kind of you know disturbed sleep, and it goes away after a few days. But it's just as you've kind of adjusted your way of eating. So uh, I'd say the the big thing that I said was look, drink more water. Uh, but the other thing, electrolytes. Uh, the, the you know the things that you take if you have diarrhea. That's a very easy way to get electrolytes, and so like diorolite because it's replacing some of the things that your, your body's losing when, you, um, when you're when you sweating it out or, or whatever. So diorolite is, is, was my big suggestion for that. Uh, a weird one for how can I sleep better, but should work. By the, I, I find that out, actually, because I went on Limbo Life on the social network for Limbo, and that was one of the answers that one of the other members shared with me. So that was good to hear. That's great to hear because Limbo Life is uh, is absolutely full of people who are going through the same thing as you. Uh, and they just become experts in their own bodies, which is wonderful. So it's nice to hear that you've got that there. The other thing I've had this week, I've had a couple of nosebleeds. Do you think that's me just getting too hot in this weather or do you think that's food related? Which bars have you been drinking in? Uh, no, I, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you're 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 somewhere else from where you normally are. Uh, nosebleed is something I can't specifically talk about. You know, I'm I'm not a um, I, I'm not a medical advisor in any way. Uh, but uh, let's have a look into it. Let me talk to Tony, our chief science officer, about nosebleeds and get you an answer. Because the only thing that I was thinking was just maybe my saturated and my unsaturated fat is not quite balanced. And obviously, when you have too much saturated fat, that's when your blood pressure can go up and could maybe cause a nosebleed. That was my only thought. So I was just wondering if you'd heard about that before. That was all. No, I'm going to say this is this is way too complicated a question for me to okay. answer as well. About, about your particular nose and blood pressure. <laughs> I did have a breakthrough at the carvery this week because, you know, we just we're talking about sauces and gravy last week. I didn't have any gravy whatsoever this week, but I did have just ca cauliflower cheese with all the other green vegetables and it didn't really cause a spike. So I've had a breakthrough eating out carvery. I think I've got the level for my body. How did it taste? So was it were you disappointed? 
To be honest with you, it didn't taste as good because obviously the salt in the gravy, I tried to add some salt on manually, um, but because there is obviously still the cheese in the cauliflower, it wasn't too bad. So I'd say nine out of 10. I think one day in the future, you'll be able to go to a place like a carvery and order a carb conscious gravy or a carb conscious roast. Yeah. Uh, I think those days are coming. So I've just been in the shower because I've just come from in the sunshine and I've just had a cold shower, Linton. Why, why is this so beneficial for me? <laughs> so cold showers are a really weird thing that Limbo members get really, really into. It's one that we're always asked about. Um, we sometimes suggest, hey, try a cold shower. And having a cold shower, uh, it's something Limbo is known for. Having a cold shower can lead to weight loss. But that statement by itself, uh, doesn't make sense because you can't just jump in the cold shower and instantly start losing weight. But if you've done a certain uh, few things, the kind of things that Limbo encourages you to do when it comes to nutrition, the way you eat, when you eat, yeah. uh, what you will find is uh, if you have a cold shower, you will be able to burn body fat. So that's why we ask you to do that. I'll just show the guys what happened. My blood glucose jumped up on my limbo. So why did it cause a spike, that cold shower? So let, let's, uh, I think your screen just faded out there. Can we have a look at that again? Yeah. First of all, Jody, by the way, can I just say how magnificent it is that your line is just hovering right in the middle of the blue there. It's right in the middle of the zone. When we first started talking just two weeks ago, you were mainly in the red. This is amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, we talk about blood sugar spikes as being something that is a sign that your body is taking on too much energy, but that's only if that blood sugar spike is coming from food. So when you eat something, like if you're eating that, that gravy, that's got uh, uh, too many carbohydrates in and hidden sugar, you get a blood sugar spike. When you're in the shower and you get a, a blood sugar spike, that's not a bad thing. And, and the reason is because of where that sugar is coming from. So, your body, your brain, they run on glucose and that glucose has to come from somewhere. It comes from food normally, unless uh, you haven't got any available because you've used it all up. And most of us do actually use up all the glucose that we have in our bodies overnight. Um, and that's where you end up in what I was talking about earlier, the ketosis. Yeah. And you're, you're kind of um, in the fasted state. So if you're getting up in the morning, uh, what happens is you use up all the stored glucose. It's, it's glycogen, um, which is in your liver and your muscles. And that's when typically our bodies are ready to use body fat. We're, we're just ready to do it. So you can do it by doing various things. And we recommend cold showers as being one way. When you get into a cold shower, here's what happens. Uh, because the temperature has you shivering, uh, has, you, um, has you kind of going, oh, that's horrendous. Uh, your body's actually acting as if you fall into, I don't know, the sea or, or a river. Uh, and what it does is it overreacts. The physiological reaction you have is an overreaction and it's fight or flight mode. Basically, that increase in glucose is helping you survive. So it's helping you do all the things like warm yourself up, keep your heart beating. Um, and in fact, your heartbeat generally increases a bit. If you have your limbo band on, you can see that. Um, and the blood sugar spike that we see there comes from, because I know how you've been eating, I can tell you that's coming from your stored fat, which means you're losing weight. So yeah. it's basically your body reacting a bit like you're, you're in a fight or flight situation and saying, look, uh, here you go, get out of this situation. Uh, and it's funny, the same thing happens from... We, we sometimes have people who have a, I don't know, a car crash or something or a big fright. Somebody's broken into their house and they have that same blood sugar spike. And it's like, why did that happen? And it's just the fight or flight reaction preparing you with the energy you need to get up and run or, or, or fight somebody or whatever. And yeah. it's just, it happens when you're in a cold shower. It's one of the easiest ways to do it. But also uh, plunge pools, they work cold sea swimming as well. All of these things sound horrific unless it's this sunny. Uh, in winter, cold showers aren't so nice but you know what they can become a habit really easily because when you've got the satisfaction of seeing your blue line go up and go oh that's probably fat yeah. um you kind of go actually you can also do that by going to the gym you, you know exercise can burn fat but imagine you could just jump in the cold shower for like a minute and that's it 
So that, that's why we suggest that. And I see you're doing it, which is awesome. And what do you think? Twice a day? Is that enough? Uh, once a day is enough. I mean, it's 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 not something we even recommend to people having all the time because it takes some time to get used to. There's a great book called The Wim Hof Method written by a guy called Wim Hof who, um, who talks about how to go about doing this. And he recommends doing it gently. You basically get into a, a, a warm shower and then it turns temperature down at the end and you do it for 10 seconds to start with. Uh, so it, it's not for the faint hearted. I do it every day now. I'll do it every morning. Great. Right. Well, I'll continue with that. Last week's tip was to bring my window down into a shorter time eating window. And week one is to eat real foods instead of, you know, fake protein and fake foods as well. So week number three, I'm set to go. Anything else that you want to challenge me with this week? So I, I would say actually keep um, increasing the amount of protein that you eat and keep that that level of water up because the insomnia thing I think will disappear soon enough um, but water when you're losing weight uh, drinking water and sleeping are two of the things that help you lose weight your body does a lot of it, its kind of housekeeping when you're asleep so actually some of the weight you're losing you're trying to lose while you're while you're sleeping so it's really important to, to get that sleep um, so what I would say is try and focus on your wind down routine, because a lot of the time, especially when you're doing stuff like, you know, you're a you're a very busy person. You you, you travel about, you're doing all sorts of stuff. You're on social media, you're, you're working with your clients and you've got to check your mobile phone. And that mobile phone at night can really interrupt your process of winding down. All you have to do is have one slightly stressful message or one reminder of an appointment you've got to prepare for tomorrow and your body's natural wind down process is starting to kind of get interrupted uh, yeah. and that can massively help your sleep you'll see it in your blood glucose by the way uh stress kind of starts to move your blood glucose up so i want you to have a look at your line what you'll start to notice is there's a point every time you look at your limbo line like every day there's a point at which your body does naturally want you to start winding down you can see it happening you've given it some signals uh which might be whatever you sit down and, and start watching netflix or whatever and you'll start noticing that wind down uh, i guess what i'm saying is um try and have more of a wind down routine so that you can start boosting your sleep um yeah. the water will help but nowhere near as much as this yeah okay right my mission will begin my wind down routine wonderful right. honestly people i work with is always get your laptop out of bed and give yourself an hour between phone screen and closing your eyes and trying to go to sleep. Pick a yeah. book up instead like the old people do, like, like me. No, not at all. We're the same age, remember, Lytton. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'll put on my Do Not Disturb from about 8 p.m., maybe 7 p.m. then, I think. I like that idea. Wonderful. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Go and enjoy the sunshine and I'll speak to you next week. You too. See you next week.